Ladies and gentlemen, this is Internet Personality Evangelist reviewing an advanced copy of Fans Project's TFX-05 Parallax Armor for Classics Optimus Prime. The idea behind this set is to reshell an accessorialist Classics Prime into a new figure experience, rather than add a trailer or similar accessory that would then attach as power-up armor. And that means there's some assembly. To start things off, take Classic Prime's two accessories and ditch them if you got them. They aren't needed. Give them some R&R. By the way, full disclosure, I'm filming all of this with a North American release 2006 Classics Optimus Prime. For the most part, this is as simple as any given third-party add-on armor installation, it's just that you're only expected to do this the one time. It is undoable too if you have second thoughts or want to swap the set around to other Classics Optimus redecos. The only major thing to point out is that the shoulder parts require the removal and installation of screws to lock the parts on tightly. This is not hard at all, just be prepared to, well, pull screws in and out. It all uses existing screw holes, so you aren't having to do anything crazy here. The big arm panel covers are as simple as can be, but the forearm and glove pieces have got a particular thing to be aware of. The initial peg is a good support lock, but the main locking comes from the big new hand. It slips over the original hand very tightly, and strikes me as the major locking mechanism of the component. If it gets tricky, just remember that Optimus's fist hole lines up with the hole next to the new thumb hinge on the new hand. The new bumper piece is very well cut, gripping on hardcore over the old one. With the chest add-on part, you've got to peel it out of the gun chunks since they're packaged in truck mode configuration. This piece was deceptively finicky for me to install, mostly because the rear tabs aren't as cut and dry to lock in as the front ones, which are precisely sculpted to lock under the original upper window ridge. Grey cannons rail slide into the backs of the shoulders, and honestly I'd have preferred to see a plug-on clip system here, especially since that's what these same pieces use in truck mode. There are a pair of tire extension caps that use the existing hubcap sculpt to tab on and bring the front wheels in line with the new bumper, which is surprisingly helpful to the final look. Also, we are almost done. The last step is the transformation of the remaining upper roof chunks into a pair of blasters. There's just enough going on to appear a little bewildering, but it boils down to a simple case of move everything that can move. Their handles thread through both the new hands and the old hands, which is dead solid, but also a quick indicator if you didn't get those new gloves on quite right. The end result is an anime Super Robot Optimus, drenched in the Fans Project Parallax aesthetic that I haven't really seen since Protector, but reminding me more of City Commander, what with all the longer smooth edges. The pectoral window plate in particular evokes that style to me. This stock configuration has one thing I very much prefer to tweak, and that one thing is in back down on Prime's posterior. Rolling up the bumper and folding the new grill plate down to form a butt plate adds just a touch of much needed bulk to the silhouette of Prime's otherwise untouched midriff. Anyway, on a red and blue Classics Prime, the parallax armor blends in pretty well thanks to both its plastic colors and topical paint apps. I think the paint does a ton, using brown and yellow highlights to bind the color layout together. The armor pieces themselves do give Prime rather long shins and calves, though I feel the raised shoulder line and bulked forearms balance that out alright. It's all sort of... God Jinrai. The midriff is the part that suffers the most, looking kind of anemic even with the bumper and front wheels rolled up to fill it out from a frontal view. Also, while I appreciate where they're coming from, the gigantic new fists feel one step too silly for me. I'd have preferred similarly huge wrist and knuckle augmentations that left some of the fingers of the original fists visible. Like, the truck panel arm chunks are still there, bold as ever, and I think they'd have only added to that super robot forearm bracer kind of appearance if the original fist had been allowed to remain the fist. I'm way into the new head sculpt, though. It builds upon the original Angry Optimus visage of the 2006 toy, adding some Power Master-esque circular Vulcans to the bases of his ears. It's a characterful portrait that does a lot to bind together the look of the add-on equipped base figure. And for all their roof kibbly transformation, the red blaster guns get away with looking pretty cool and overblown in a fun, super robot sort of way. Some silver paint on the sculpted details that are revealed by the fold-open hinged bit would have done a lot to add to their impact. The new head's on a ball joint so it can look left and right as you do. Um, it's also got just a touch of waggle. It can look up a bit. Can't really look down because of the chin piece, but it's, it's a functional head. He can also look behind himself if you're one of the two people who are super into that. The shoulders are basically Classics Prime shoulders, so uh, they still work. Um, you know, this outward joint still works. Uh, there's some forward and backward motion here. And 
the way that I have uh, the bumper rolled up, there's a bit of a collision when you're moving the arm forward, but it's over this wheel, so it doesn't impede it heavily, there's just a collision, then uh, it kind of gets out of the way. Uh, the elbow is still Classics Prime's ratcheted elbow. Uh, also, these cannons can waggle, and these, these backpack cannons can waggle as well, if that's what you're into. The new hands don't have a wrist joint. Uh, original Classics Prime didn't have a wrist joint, and these are clamped on over those hands, so I'm not surprised. Uh, there is a thumb hinge, and then the knuckle piece is connected with a ball socket joint. So I generally just leave them like this. I think that looks best when it's a fist. When it's open, uh, it's, it's kind of awkward and only accentuates how large it is in a way that I feel... Uh, takes away from the overall look and I just don't get why this is ball socketed on there's a bit of waggle here But it doesn't accomplish too much in general. I'm not a big fan of this finger piece uh, in either mode I think it kind of takes away from the whole look as for waist articulation. I have this thing rolled up here So with this rolled up the way I like it. It's not really any waist articulation the joint up here on the upper torso from uh, the transformation, you can wiggle it a bit, but there are so many parts colliding back here, I wouldn't rely on it for posability. If you put this guy back into his quote-unquote stock configuration by rolling this back down, now you get uh, some of the waist joint, uh, but only you know so much before the wheels bang into the legs. And that does offer a bit more posing, but then this midriff is so tiny. I'm okay sacrificing most of the waist motion to have this bulked up a touch, at least, you know, silhouette-wise, in a way that I think looks better. The legs, uh, the hip joints, I mean, are still Classics Primes, so it's the same motion, as are the thighs, swivels, and the knees. Uh, that's all the same. Despite having elongated God Jinrai boots, I feel like the knee joint still has just enough placement so that bending it accomplishes something. Like, I feel like this is still dynamic, uh, so I'm okay with that. Down here... In Anklesville, uh, there is an ankle tilt on the front part of the foot, like right here. So, you know, there's a humongous standing base, and only the front part tilts. It's mostly tilting for appearances more than anything, but I think it looks pretty good when it is tilted. Like, that's, that's sharp looking. There, there's something going on there. So, posability wise this guy doesn't add anything, obviously, but he doesn't sacrifice that much. You don't have to sacrifice the waist joint if you don't care about the midriff area, I just prefer this. Uh, and I feel like you don't really lose any range on the major limb joints. The new ball jointed head uh, is, is a nice touch. Uh, this guy accomplishes what City Commander couldn't, which is that when you're posing him with all the stuff attached, it still looks kind of natural. So that's A-OK. -okay. Also, you can wiggle these if you feel like that is uh, you know going to do something for you. All right, strip off the four weapon pieces and get ready to transform. We're gonna check out the new vehicle mode. After you fold the new head up into the new backpack mush, things get very reminiscent of Classics Optimus. I mean, this quote unquote new toy is built on top of him. And just like with Classics Optimus, the trickiest parts to transform are the arms. Mainly because there are a bunch of extra steps that have to be executed in a somewhat particular order. Once you've run through it and understand the logic, it gets Classics Optimus easy, which means you just have to keep track of where the hell those damn chunks of truck panel on his forearms are going. Now you can add the weapons back on to complete the cab, committing no fewer and no further sins than Classics Optimus and his own detaching roof chunks. I just wish this stuff could stay attached throughout, perhaps forming a larger backpack from which two pieces could then detach and turn into blasters and shoulder cannons. By the way, you can leave the gray cannons in their robot mode configurations if you want to, but then the exhaust pipes will stick up much farther. And I like my exhaust pipes nice, tight, and snug to the rear. Anyway, the legs are the last bit to convert, and now that a majority of the work is being done by their add-on parts, this is almost easier to go through than on Classics Optimus. Just be aware that the right leg's front panel has to tab down into the left leg's front panel. It's a keyed piece. You've dealt with them before, you know what I'm talking about. This new truck mode is my favorite part of this add-on experience, as it is noticeably larger in like every direction, and noticeably heavier as well. The reworked cab looks badass, with a silver swish that matches up decently with the square of original truck mode that's visible on either side. I love the shapes and the angles, and just as much enjoy the elongated and cleaned up rear section. There is a hole on the back of the cab that leaves the top of the new robot mode head visible, but I can deal with that. I can't as easily deal with the new gas tanks. They look great, 
aside from the large four finger chunk that's ball jointed onto them. This only fuels my argument that the new hands should have instead just been new knuckle guards. If the new finger pieces weren't present, the truck mode would be borderline unblemished. As it is, I cannot figure out a way to fold those fingers in any fashion that does not immediately distract. The hitch in the back is carved to pull the G3 trailer with full-on turning axis action, and a bit of distance between the cab and its rectangular burden. If you set up the full convoy of a parallax upgraded prime, a G3 trailer, and the powered commander armor, it looks intense. It's a shame there's no way to add the armor onto the parallax upgraded prime robot mode to complete the hat trick in both modes. Also, in case you're wondering, Parallax Upgraded Prime can't pull the Commander trailer on his own, but I don't really see a reason for him to do so without bot mode compatibility as well. This upgrade set definitely brings back the Parallax visual style, but I keep waiting for that certain special moment. It follows a design document that states, Reshell the figure, have the parts stay on throughout transformation, allow the roof and stacks to detach and form weapons like on the original. End of line. And it completes those tasks, but it also leaves me feeling like I have a very interesting proof of concept piece rather than a fully realized fans project experience. It just needs another layer, some kind of midriff add-on, a means to keep the roof chunk weaponry stored away in robot mode, possibly even without detaching during transformation, a cleaner hand solution. The vehicle mode's already hitting a lot of marks. I just feel like this set has dealt with the skin, meat, and bones of what it's trying to do, but still needs some more fancy clothes to seal the deal. Absolutely, it seems like a cool way to jazz up an incomplete Junker Classics Prime, but I'm not sure if that's enough for the larger buyer market. Anyway, this has been Internet Personality Evangelist, and holy crap, I forgot how incredibly cool and out there the G3 trailer's stealth mode is. I should have dug it out of storage a long time ago. I... I don't know where it is. It's just... it's disappeared again. Oh, no!